special meeting Monday, February 12th at 7 p.m. Mr. Kitko, please just call attendance to these things yeah, now. Yeah, we can do that. Um, Mayor Reynolds? Here. Mr. Lighty? Here. Mr. Lowry? Here. Mr. Shammy? Here. Mr. Cobb? Here. Mr. Cook? Here. And Mr. Lindsay, Vice Mayor Lindsay? Here. All, right. All present. In that seat, I can remember things. Over here, I don't know what the name is. Our education is going to be led tonight by Vice Mayor Bill Lindsay. Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask you again to bless this council, bless this city, Father. Father, we ask you to especially bless the families of the two police officers that was killed over the weekend in Westerville. Father, we ask you that you just comfort that family and that department. Keep a hand and an eye on all of our first responders, fire departments, and Leo's father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. get people out there picnicking. You know, shooting baskets. Have you looked at the tennis courts lately? And the basketball courts? You know, even people that are sitting on a swing talking is in, with their neighbors. That is important. I'll read quickly what they call the quick facts. And this, is com this comes from the National Recreation Park and, uh, Association. Two-thirds of older adults who visit parks report moderate or high levels of physical activity during their visits. Active users of public parks have a lower body mass index than the people who use parks passively, and not at all. People who visit parks for longer periods of time had significant low, lower blood pressure. Park users who were more physically active and who made frequent contact with friends, though their leisure time were less likely to report feeling depressed. Users of the community-based senior wellness program had significantly higher endurance levels. Their parks have stress relief levels. Clearing one's mind and exercise were the most common benefits 
that older adults attributed to their park visits. People who visited parks with companions report significantly higher levels of physical activity. Citizens who had better access to parks visited parks more frequently and engaged in physically active park behaviors, also made fewer visits to their doctor. People who visited parks more frequently were more likely to have a positive perception of their general health. Older adults who engaged in a broad repertoire of park and recreation activities were more likely to report higher levels of perceived physical health. So I'm standing up here right now. I think the $10,000 for fireworks would be a waste of money. Thank you so much for your comments. Any other comments from members of the public? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. May I comment? Yes. John, uh, I can see your argument, but I, I really do. I, I can see that argument both ways, for or against the fireworks. I mean, personally, um, you know, $10,000 for fireworks is, is literally a, a drop in the bucket in, you know, in comparison to the city's entire budget as a whole. I think Randy's done and council's done in the past as, as far as getting parks looking, you know, and you've been on, you've been on council, you know, he's done a phenomenal job of getting uh, parks up to date, I think, with new equipment and, and swings for the kids, uh, mulch and things of that nature. Um, one of the things we'd said at that meeting, I can't remember if you were there during the fireworks, the first meeting for the budget for the fireworks was is also with a stipulation that we would try and raise money to to counter it or pay for them in, in, in whole. Um, I, I think fireworks is a positive thing for the fact that, you know, I think the initial goal was to do it on a day that no one else was going to have fireworks. So therefore, we're not going to have fireworks on a night, say, just for example, Tip is. And then all the surrounding cities are going to say, well, wow, New Carlisle's having fireworks tonight. Let's go there. So we so we really draw in a crowd from other cities that may have never been here before. And they might spend their money in shops and things of that nature. And I, and I do think it is uh, something that would be worthwhile giving back to the community for all the money that they have had to uh, to give back to New Carlisle for roads and things of that nature. So, But I, but I see it either way. I mean, I really do. And I, I think it would be a... A, a positive to, to go forward with it, but at the same time, I, I mean, I can't speak for everyone on council. I know s some of us have some ideas on how to raise money for them, and I think that that's what the ultimate goal is to try and get them paid for without using that money. So that's just my two cents. Thank you. Any other comments? No. All right, moving on to we have no ordinances, no resolutions, other business, our budget work session. So. Start on page, I believe it is, 27. Yeah. Numbers are different in this one than the old one. Oh, well. The numbers on the bottom of the page are different. My, they shouldn't be. Yeah. Well, on the bottom of the one. Probably because they're covered. But that does. But no worries. All right. So operating budget revenues is something that we cannot touch. It's um, operating. Uh, before we do get started, um, Colleen um, recently, very recently, just got her updated uh, certification from the county auditor for our revenue. So you will we'll see some slight changes in some revenues. It didn't impact any bottom line too greatly.
Can I just real quick, if, if May, uh, Bob, did you have anyone to talk about since you're, you're from water? <laughs> okay, I just, wanted, I just wanted to ask. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, anytime. Uh, this is for operating, water, wastewater operating. This is revenues. Can't touch it. Wastewater operating expenditures. Any comments, questions, or concerns, Council? I have. Uh, we went and toured the water, uh, the wastewater plant uh, two years ago, I think now, it must have been two years, and there was the lift station, I think is what it's called, uh, it looks all the nastiness of that. The bar screen. Bar screen, thank you.
be improved. Oh, really? Yes, it would be on the floor. Because everything out, out there is already improved subsurface. It doesn't need any kind of digging out of any kind. Oh, okay. Does that, does that help you with your answer? Does it feel better with the stuff? on the wastewater capital improvement. I know this one, um, a couple years back, well actually it was 2013 and 2014, we tried to take money, a percentage out of your operating ending fund balance and put into your wastewater capital uh, for future capital projects. Um, that is typically where you get your TAP fees. They go into there for new connections and then that, those TAP fees are for those uh, future upgrades. Well, we obviously we are pretty much, I'm not, we're not tapped out, but this is no building anywhere where we got sewer installed so we are looking uh, we've been talking as, as administrators to try and get that uh, implemented back in where we use some of our ending fund balance to possibly put towards our uh, capital improvement plan Strictly for capital, or is that for all sorts of other funds of capital? Too? Are we putting funding capital? Any funds have capital in funds have the funding balance in it? Yeah. Okay. Are we putting anything aside for maintenance? than private people, if you have burial, you can put money towards perpetual care for annual uh, flowers on your graves and like things like that.
not an organization of their choice. So I think it's a valiant effort, whatever council decides to do, I think it's going to have a ripple effect on it. And quite frankly, I don't think we're there yet to be giving our money away. I think these counties do it because they got the operating budget to do it. People see we have a little money in the bank, and yet it's it's being spent, spent, spent. Um, uh, I totally respect your guys' decision. I just think it's going to have a ripple effect of other organizations coming to seek money. Um, and I agree with them that if it's going to be taken from something, I think it needs to be looked at with fireworks. If you're going to take 3000 out for a food pantry, then you got to look at what else can be cut. Um, I agree. But at the end of the day, it's your guys' money. We just administer it. Thank you for asking my opinion. My thing is just, I think it's going to have ripple effects. I truly, truly do. Just for instance, one of the, wait one second, Mr. Lowry, then we'll go to you. Uh, one other thing, if, if we're considering a lower amount, two, three thousand, twenty five hundred, whatever it may be, why don't we not put it in? That's not a, that's not a big number to raise money from. We could come up with a creative way to do some sort of fundraiser for the food pantry on our own and not put it in, take it from the budget. I mean, that's not a lot of money to come up with. You know, just the thought. That way, you're doing two deeds. You're not, you know, you're coming up, you're, you're coming up with a way to raise money through a fundraiser to give to the food pantry, and then you're also not taking, like you said, tax dollars, monies to do it. Just my opinion. Here's here's my concern. I don't want to interrupt. I was telling, I was talking to Mr. Chico about this when I first came over. I think I was writing a proclamation for Lowell. And on the proclamation, I put on behalf of the citizens in New Carlisle, and that jumped on me. So, like, you can't put language like that in there because not every one of your citizens may agree with the proclamation. Not a, I, here's the deal: if you do it, I think it's going to make a lot of people happy, but it may make some people angry. You're down if you do, and darn if you don't. I mean, if that's something council wants to do as a whole, more power to you. I mean, like I said, I think the ripple effect is going to come back and get you guys. So, Mr. Chair, well, I would say. Uh, that's a community garden. Why don't you go to the community garden? He said you know, it'll be a ripple effect. You know, went out the community. Um, the, the food pantry is not, it's not really hurting. You know, the trouble with the food pantry is that they do buy a lot of their food from the second harvest. You know, 571 citizens were served this last month with the food pantry. 571. Of our citizens or just from the Our citizens. Our citizens. Our citizens. I, I, I got Sixty-nine of them were senior citizens. I mean, this and uh, another one thirty-two were uh, family, single moms and families. You know, I mean, I think this really drives home. I mean, this is something I, I'm really passionate about. Is, I is I mean, each, each year I do my family doesn't need the family Christmas. And I'm very passionate about this topic. And, I mean, I'm tomorrow afternoon after I stop. Uh, I'm kind of a secret mafia stops <laughs> and then you know, put stuff up. I go pick it up, you know, with the okay. So I know what's happening on the, on the inside, you know, and, and I agree, you know, you know, with any donation that you can. And I'll start a very grand, you know, you know, other people are going to hear about that, but, you know, why not us? Why not senior citizens? Uh, why not? Well, this is the first time I've heard of it. If it should, if we donate, Good results to them, and they they say, "Hey, we have five. We're able, we're able to only feed 600 families a month on average. Now we can feed 650 or 700. I mean, 29 percent of New Carlisle is impoverished. Uh, you know, 52 uh, percent of us uh, are right at the poverty letter level in the sense of what our annual income is to the state of Ohio. I mean, well, the local food pantry serves 300 and something. Yeah, well, they cut 358. That's when they're here, though. I mean, this one's here in town, so that's just my opinion of it. But I mean, I would be willing to compromise and take. Quote me if I'm wrong.
I, I'd be willing to take out the 3000 and market for food pantry. I mean, how does everyone feel on that issue? It's better than nothing, I think. In my opinion, though, this is something I want. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Lighty, sorry. I've been um, <laughs> I looked over at my, my bad, sorry. I, I think it is a good idea to maybe, you know, go ahead and budget for it, but let's go ahead and see what the need really is. Um, because all I, all I can think in my head is that we're going to get phone calls saying, hey, you're doing this when you should be fixing the streets. You know, that's your job. And, you know, being active in Bethel Churches United and even in the food pantry, they are stocked. I mean, they're so. You know, let's make sure that I, I know help is always good, and this is a very noble thing to do. But uh, you know, once in need, let's make sure that uh, you know. Let's go talk to them and see. Hey, is this really going to help you out, or they're going to be like, I Yeah, that's I great. And he said, that. and he said, and he said yes, yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is I mean, how does council feel? Would you be acceptable for three thousand? I mean, we'll start on the line to go this way. We'll get back to you one second, Becky. Mr. Cobb, how do you feel about doing seven thousand for fireworks and three thousand for the food pantry? We're still going to fireworks show. That was amazing. That we once had before. I kind of agree with Mr. Graybacker saying it, and Mr. Bridge, it could come back and bite you. And th this town right now, they're not happy, I'll tell you that. Uh, we got a fire and EMS levy coming up. We've got to be careful what we do. I, I do have one question if I can ask Miss McKenzie. Yes. Your, your funds that you're wanting for the park, what are your plans for that fund? <clears throat> Um, 
I don't know if the auditor even have an opinion on it, to be honest with you. They have an opinion on, you know, how I am it, but I don't know if they're going to sit there and say yes or no, it's legal. I'm pretty sure you can. Okay. Um, if I had to put money on it, like Vegas betting on it, but I still don't know 100% for sure. But okay. other people have done it, so it's a matter of maybe the wording on it maybe has to be changed. If that makes sense, instead of saying, like, donation, I don't know. Maybe it comes down to what kind of verbiage is on that line item. Right, thank you. Uh, I believe that we should help the, the hungry in this town, and that food pantry does feed this town. I don't think people from out of town or Bethel Township or Van Day or Tip City or Huber is coming over visiting our food pantry. So I would be good with whatever the majority of council would want to do. If it came to a vote, I would vote for it. I think we need to contact Bill Berry and get the Chautauqua grant put back into place. I know they donated several they donated money to several of the five one trees. And to me this might be something that we as a council can put together and along with the parks department. Because I think with the I don't want to say this, the musical venue that was held out here by Chautauqua, I think that also would be to the everybody's benefit. Not only council, we wouldn't be possibly getting the backlash on that type of a thing. This, 
I don't think it gets given to food pantry, does it? Yeah, I, do. I know we yeah. sell stuff. We do that too. So. You know, last year we gave over 100 pounds of potatoes, five close to 75 pounds of green beans. $200,000. Yeah, I did like 197 I think. But it just depends on the if there was any inflation added to this year. Yeah, but I have $200,000 to take somewhere. Cincinnati, and uh, their their minimum package is two thousand, and that covers insurance and everything. And we spent six thousand on our show. It was, I mean, we had I mean, it was a crappy night weather wise, but yeah. it was it was a nice good show. It was a good show for six grand. Yeah, it was a great show for six thousand. <laughs> the township got money. If we could go in half the Duffel Township and half us to put on a great fireworks show because you know their citizens are going to come and see it anyway. Right. The uh, circulation of raising money. So let's go ask about the township. Would you be opposed to 
cutting that down to six thousand or uh, that's seven thousand. That's fine with and me because I'm putting the, the the excess back into the general fund. That's fine with me. I mean, that's well, aren't you? We're talking about doing the donations and several fundraising right. things in order to, uh, to try and offset it. Yeah, try, try and offset, offset it, yeah. those. I, I think we're talking something yeah. here that we don't know about yeah. until we <coughs> get down to the okay. end. Like but if, if we pick up donations, like the conversation is gone. So I don't see any reason not to cut the fireworks fund down to 6000 and put that 4000 back in the general fund, fund because Ms. Harris, is, Ms. Harris says, you know, the police levy is coming up in a year and a half, which actually I'd forgotten about. So I think uh, some of the things that we have probably we should trim a little bit if we can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Has anyone called Rousey's recently to find out what their yeah. new rate structure is? If it, it's six it, or ten, it, it they're it, not going to be getting upset 7, because it's four thousand dollars. Yeah. It's not. And you know, four thousand ain't just gonna no. make a drop in budget. But I, I mean, I, I think someone should call Rousey's. How long ago was that? That you guys did 2014, that? 2014. So. Oh, so it's only four years. So price might be a little bit. But, you know, sorry. If that. I would hate for you to like, take 7000 down to save the general fund, mm -hmm. and then it comes back. The smallest package now is like 9000 It's what, what they do is their, their minimum you can spend, or at least in 2014, is two grand. Uh -huh. So if you have, you know, they, they don't, I mean, I guess they could build you a package like we'll do this for, but I mean, if you say we've got $6,400, we want to spend every nickel of that on the possible, and we'll let off exactly $6,400 worth of fire. Oh. It's not like we have package A that's at sure. eight thousand two hundred, and package B that's twelve thousand two hundred and fifteen cents, whatever you know. So, so we say we have six thousand bucks. What can you do? Yeah, if you say we've got six grand. Do what you can do. That's what we'll do. Okay. Any other comments, questions, concerns? Mr. Hickok. Uh, this may. Um, go ahead. No. No, no, go ahead. I was going to say, th this, this is probably not part of this budget, but it's definitely something to think about. You've heard the fluoride issue come out, and that just crossed my mind because just I want to let you know that that issue is out there, um, that that can, that can be a very expensive issue. So do your research. I will be, obviously, as a superintendent myself, we will be doing more research than what we already know as certified operators. And when that time comes, we will be addressing that. Do we put Florida in no. our water? We do not right now. I know. Like Huber does. And it's the county is doing it. They're getting ready to do it. But I could, don't quote me on this. And then Charlie talked about this. Yeah. You don't have to get a water system. Yeah. I don't say. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not real sure. I just don't even. It's a waste of money. It's not required for the fluoride. Yeah. Not yet. That's that's why I was saying just do some. See here. Well, no, because I just read an article. I think Springfield just turned it down. Springfield turned it down. I think the county, though, through the health commissioner, is doing it. So let me ask you this: If the health commissioner gets it passed, are we now required to follow suit because he's the county health commissioner? Uh, I don't. I don't know. I honestly would apply to that case. I don't think Homer would cover us on that. I would hope so. But. I, didn't, I didn't mean to bring it up that way, but it, it is a very touchy subject all around the U.S. with fluoride. So basically, we, we could fight him if he says you guys have to do it. We'll, we'll cross that bridge yeah, when we get there. <coughs> all right. Thank you, sir. I had two. I apologize. I'm trying to find it real quick, Colin. Did you break down the, the pool with another line item for uh, I just didn't do it on this budget yet. Okay. And then two, this one come up, I forgot. Twin Creeks, okay, they voted to get rid of their homeowners association, which means I'm assuming New Carlisle is going to start taking care of the grass and things out there. We already do. We just don't mow it on a, like a make it a pristine basis. And the lot where the clubhouse used to be built, we just basically do a couple pads and wrap the outside, let the inside do its own thing. Yeah, retention basin. I promise that's what I All right. Council, anything else? All right. Um, Monday, we'll have our budget intro for new council members. The ordinance is not going to look like this. It's basically um, you guys just approved the appropriations.
Uh, so basically, it'll just have a fun and number on it. Um, it's not going to look like this. Yeah. And then what's going to happen is I will give you a final draft version, um, pretty, and I will knock it probably out this weekend. I don't know if I'll have it done before Monday's council meeting, but you'll have the final version, and that's going to be all pretty good drafts and all that good stuff. Are you still having a council meeting on Monday night, President's Day? That's Tuesday. not my council to call that. It's Tuesday night. So it's Tuesday, Tuesday night. We have a meeting Tuesday night. Oh, well, if you're leaving up to me, then we're having one council meeting a month, which is a charter requirement. <laughs> it's my call. So. <laughs> All right. See you in a month. Good, Mr. Mayor. See you in a month. Mr. Lowry. <laughs>